This is tutorial 1-2, working with map layers in the GIS tutorial 1 basic workbook. Uh, we're going to cover quite a few things in this tutorial, including how to deal with layers, which is the, the thing that you're seeing in the center of my screen, as well as some other map properties. Now, the first step, they want you to save the map document as tutorial 1-2 MXD to the chapter 1 folder in the My Exercise. Now, if you're continuing from the previous tutorial, you're going to go up to Save As. If you did not create the shortcut, you have to go to File and then Save As. Then you're going to want to browse to your My Exercises, go to Chapter 1, and then change this to 1-2. Now, if you're starting from break, in doing the tutorials, you can always go to open. You can go up until you get to maps and you can open up the tutorial 1-2 map document. Now we're going to turn on one of our layers and that's the US cities. So you're gonna to wanna to go to your table of contents and you're gonna to wanna to check the box. And as you can see, the cities have come on. If I check it off, they disappear. I had an issue with ArcGIS 10.5.1 where this box when I was on the list by drawing order was not visible. I've since updated to 10.61 so that went away. If you have that issue you might want to save your progress, shut it down and bring it back up. It might just be a hiccup. If not you might want to see about checking for a, for a patch. So we're going to move on with the U.S. cities checked off, and then we're going to use the Add Data button, which is up here. It's the little cross, and there's a magnification of it, and we have this Add Data window pop up. Now it wants us to go up here to this little folder with the plus sign on it, and this is how we connect to folders. And you're going to want to go to where you loaded your your data, most likely the C drive, and it tells you to browse all the way to the GIS T1, but I recommend just doing it to the Esri Press folder because you're likely to be downloading or working with other Esri books and they always put all their data and their maps in this folder. So it's very useful to have this be the, the parent folder. So now I'm connected to it so I can go into GIS T1 go into data, and then it wants me to go to the United States Geo Database. Uh, and that's this right here, that the GDB stands for Geo Database. And once we're in here, we're gonna click on the CO counties, which is the Colorado counties. And it's this one right here. And then you can click add. Now I got this geographic coordinate systems warning. What this means is that this layer that I'm adding is using a different coordinate system than the layers that I already have added. Now the program will automatically convert this on the fly to where it will line up properly. If you're using the book for ArcGIS 10.2, this was likely corrected and you won't have this show up. But if it does, all you're gonna do is click close and you can see that the Colorado counties has shown up. Now I'm going to open up the, the properties real quick for this and I'm gonna do that by double clicking the CO counties. And we're gonna to go to source and we're going to look at where this is being stored. It's being stored on the C drive in an Esri Press folder and another folder called GIST1 and another folder called data in a geo database called the United States. Now, if I were to copy this and put it on someone else's computer, say their desktop, and I were to open up this program again and use this map, it would not know how to find that if I was using an absolute path. And I bring this up because in the next step, we're going to be looking at making sure that this is set to a relative pathway. So you're gonna go up to file, file and then map document properties and down here you can see that it's already set to store relative pathways to the data sources 
So that means as long as the overall structure of the folders stays the same, you won't run into any issues of broken pathways. But if you were to put this, build this on your desktop and then take it to school or to a co-workers or to a friend's house and try to use it on their computer on their desktop, you would run into issues because it would be looking at the desktop under their username and not yours. Now this is just for this map document and you can see they went in and gave a summary and description, they gave an author and credits and everything. So I'm going to click OK. We can set it up to where the default is for relative pathways. So you're going to go up to customize, arc map options, and you're going to want to make sure you're on the general tab. And then you're going to uh, check this box under general and make relative paths the default for new map documents. So you're just going to check that and then you're going to click OK. Not sure why that's not already the default check. Now we've added data using this add data button but there is another way to do it and that's the catalog panel and if you look over here you have this little tab called catalog. Now if yours is missing, say you don't you have search or you don't have anything there, you can come up here right under help and there's this symbol right here that says catalog. If you click that it opens up the catalog panel. Um, so I'm going to expand that and right now the home is always the folder where you're getting it from. So right now it's just looking at the My Exercise Chapter 1 folder. But we've already made a folder connection to Esri Press, or at least I did. So I'm going to expand that, expand GIST1, expand data, and then I'm going to expand the United States. And I'm going to find CO counties, and I'm going to click it, and I'm going to drag it and just drop it on the map. Once again, I get that warning. I'm going to click close. And now I have two versions of Colorado counties. They're both the same, just added differently. Now, I have two of them, and I don't need that. You could turn one off, but then it's kind of just cluttering up your table of contents. So to remove layers you don't need, you can just right-click it, and you will have remove pretty close up to the top. And now I just have the one layer. You may have noticed that they were uh, different colors. The program auto signs a, a color randomly, so it's there is no real rhyme or reason that I know of to it. Now, you might be using the catalog tab over here quite a bit, and it's kind of annoying that if you click on the map, it kind of disappears. That's the one nice thing about having a larger monitor. You have more space to kind of see things. So I like to have it stick around. So I can hit the um, auto hide and now the pin is pointed down, meaning I can click over here and it's not going to close. But say I do want it, make it close. I just go over here, I click it again, and it, it hides. And when it comes back out, you can see that the pin is now pay, uh, pointing to the left. If for some reason you do not like the catalog here, you can just click it and drag it. And it could be free floating. For some reason, if you want to put it down here, you can. You can put it up here. You can have it to where both of your table contents and catalog are on this side or you can place it here and have a tab to where you can go back and forth from your table of contents and your catalog. Now, if you want to take it off this, you have to go down here to the tab on the bottom and drag it off. Because if you didn't and you did it up here, I'll just show you. 
if you just went like this, it would take both of them, and we don't want that. Uh, so I'm going to come down here, grab my catalog, and I'm going to place it back here, because that's where I like it. Uh, we're going to be adding another layer, and you can use the Add Data button or the catalog. Since I have my catalog open and it's in the same geo database, I'm just going to add the CO streets to the map. I got no warning this time. And you can see it's this little cluster right here. So we're going to go back to our table of contents and you're going to want to make sure that you're on the list by draw order. Uh, and we're going to turn on our US cities. And then you're going to highlight US cities, click it, and drag it to the bottom. Uh, over here, you can see one of the dots still. That's because the little island is very small, so the the feature can be seen from beneath it. Uh, the same is true for the East Coast and the West Coast, and over here by the, the lakes. And I had that mixed up. This is the West Coast and this is the East Coast. When you initially add a layer, if it's a point, it always goes up to the top. And the newest point layer goes to the very top. Now, if you add a line, it will go beneath the points. And the newest line feature is always at the top of the lines. And if you add a polygon, it goes underneath points and lines. And the newest polygon goes at the top of all the polygons. So if you're ever working on a map and you're sure that you've added the right layer, but it's not appearing on your map first, make sure that it's checked and then make sure that it is not being covered up by a different layer. This most commonly happens between polygons. For example, if I went like that and US is on top of counties, I can't see my counties. So we're going to click and drag the US cities right back up to the top. And now we're going to look at a quick way to change symbology, uh, which is, in this case, just the color of a feature. So underneath our CO counties, you see this little colored square that matches the symbol here. You're going to click on that, and that opens up the symbol selector. You have different options. You have the fill color, and then you have the outline color. We're going to change the fill color to tarragon green. Uh, which is in the sixth column and about five down, so right here. So I'm going to click on that, then I'm going to click OK, and you can see that it's changed colors. Now we're going to click on it again because you can see it's a little hard to see those, uh, those borders. And we're going to click on the outline color this time, and we're going to change that to black and then click OK and we're gonna go in there a quick again and you can change the, the width I changed it to one so now they're much thicker but I'm gonna go back in and change that to the default 0.4 Now for the your turn, you're supposed to change the colors of the CO street layer to a light shade of gray, about 20%. So we're going to click on the little line symbol. And you can see they have a lot of defaults. And we're going to come in here. And they actually give you the percentage on the grays. Uh, so you want the third one down in the first column. And then click OK. Uh, you can't really see it. You can barely see it with uh, the magnifier on, but you'll you'll get to see that much more up close later on in another tutorial. And that's it for this video.